You can hear my voice clap twice. Okay. Welcome everyone to the, what is it? June, Oak Park Neighborhood Association meeting. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with the Oak Park Neighborhood Association, we're a 501c3 nonprofit um, located in the Oak Park Neighborhood. And really what our mission is, is to advocate for the Oak Park Neighborhood from a quality of life perspective. Um, so again, we're an all-volunteer organization. We have several board members uh, here with us tonight. Raise your hand if you're on the board. And just really appreciate you guys coming out. We do these uh, these meetings monthly, except for July 4th. So uh, we're not going to do that one. I don't think we have good uh, participation. So today we're going to be um, talking about uh, an opportunity to direct some HUD funding that the city receives, a uh, housing and urban department of housing and urban development. Um, um, funding that the city of Sacramento receives regularly. And then we're also going to hear some special guests. Raise your hand to hear our special guests. Uh, some folks here from SAC RT and SAC Metro Advocates for Rail and Transit. Um, really excited for, for what they're going to share just about the importance of transit and some of the cool things that are, that are happening in Oak Park. Um, so we'll get to that soon, but the first thing we always like to do is do a round of introductions around the room. So, um, as I said, Adrian Wren, I'm the president of the Oak Park Neighborhood Association. I live on 4th Avenue and 39th. Um, we'll go over here first. So, if you'd like to share your name and then where your name you are, and maybe how long you've been here. Uh, Noelle Brenner, and I live on 4th Avenue, and I've been here about, no, I don't know, 30 years or so, something like that. Record holder, so far. I'm Tommy Tuck Drive. Okay, we'll get to you. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Tuck Drive, live on 33rd Street at Dagon Alley, and I came in here at the end of the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Austin, uh, I've only been here for like last August. Yeah, last August. Um, yeah. I also live on 33rd and 4th Avenue with neighbors. Yeah. 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 Director for Action. 
Academy Square with UC Davis, and my office is on Stockton across the street from me. Hi, my name is Catherine Solberg, and I go by Kay. Um, I was actually born in Cambodia. She refers to the Pacific area where you are.
Um, so before we hand it off to our, our transportation crew, um, there is one, we, we, we were going to have a presentation of someone who, who can't make it today about the HUD funding. Um, there is, I have one copy left of this, but it has a QR code. So if you have, as long as you have a smartphone, you can access this document. But basically, it is a, an opportunity. Um, you will you basically be in a focus group, um, limited to 10 people per group. There will be multiple focus groups. Uh, you'll be asked questions about some of the, the housing and urban development funding that the city of Sacramento receives. Um, and so for your participation, just go to the QR code, check it out. You will get a $35 gift card if you participate in the focus group, and you'll be entered for a $100 gift card drawing. Um, this is important. It is a Dave kind of data driven approach to how, how some of the money for things like housing get distributed. So if you feel if you have a strong opinion about housing in Sacramento, this is a good way to plug in. It is through like a consultant that the, that the city of Sacramento is working with. So it's not like you're directly talking to city staff, you're talking to kind of a middle person who's facilitating this process. But again, plug in if you, you know, if you really want to do your So that's what that's about. I'm not like a technical expert in all this stuff, but uh, come, come get me if you don't have a copy and want to get to this work. All right? So with that, I'm going to invite our, our, our transportation crew up. Um, if you guys want, we have our camera facing here, and you know, yeah. we like to report for people who can't come. So, you know, the floor is yours, and I'm sure folks will come. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, thanks everybody for, for being here tonight and for giving us a chance to speak to you. I'm going to just do a quick introduction and then turn things over to Sam mostly. But my name is Craig Fishman. I'm the Sacramento Regional Transit. I'm the Senior Community Relations Officer there. I've been there about a year and a half, so that means I know everything there is about <laughs> transportation Sacramento. Now, I'm still learning a lot myself uh, as, as we go. But um, I, our real purpose here tonight is to give you some hard information about what some, some some things that SACRT is doing and some ways we're growing and some fun things that we're doing, but also to hopefully get you excited about trying regional transit and our light rail and bus system. If you don't use it already, we do have uh, our, our paratransit service that we operate, and we also have what um, we call Smart Ride, which is a point-to-point, uh, -point, almost like a Lyft or an Uber service. It doesn't cover the whole city, it doesn't cover every place, but where it exists, it kind of makes up for some gaps in our fixed route service. So you can, you can find that on our website as well, under Smart Ride um, uh, for, for ZACRT. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Sam. There will be a time for questions, and we will definitely get to talk a little bit about plans for Stockton Boulevard, because I know that's, that's probably high on your list. So I'm going to let Sam get through his part of the presentation. We'll answer some questions, and I think we can just also pass out a survey that we would be really grateful if you answered. No, no survey just yet, but I do, uh, do have it for you over the end. Everyone, again, uh, my name is Sam Rice. Uh, I'm your neighbor, live right down the street, so good, good to be here with you all. Uh, I'm here from two different organizations. One is called the Environmental Council of Sacramento. Uh, the other is called the Sacramento Metro Advocates for Rail and Transit. So both are very interested in the environment and the development and utilization of public transportation here in Sacramento. Um, I always like to start with a little bit of history. Uh, when I talk to people about public transportation here, it'll be no news to anyone who lives or grew up in Oak Park. Uh, but Oak Park used to be a thriving hub for Sacramento's streetcar system. So back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, the um, Clashy Park was actually a terminus at the end of one of our uh, electric streetcars. That network uh, basically built Sacramento. The reason that you see Lamb Park as an incredibly affluent uh, community, uh, as well as East Sacramento, is because they were on streetcar lines. Uh, Riverside Boulevard had a streetcar, so did J Street running down it, uh, and then down here to Oak Park. So when we talk about transit and transit investment, it's really talking about bringing transit back uh, to Sacramento, because we did already have a, a robust network, and uh, a lot of the time that's why the city looks uh, the way that it does. Um, as far as SACRT is concerned, there are current regional provider for public transportation uh, with over 440 square miles of service area. So we're talking the entire county uh, out into Elk Grove even. Uh, so pretty large service area having to serve quite a few people. Pre-COVID, uh, they had about 22 million people in annual ridership. So a uh, very robust system, uh, like Greg said, with uh, light rail service, bus service, uh, and the paratransit and, and smart ride service. 
So the question really is, you know, why should we choose uh, and support public transportation? First, uh, it's really important right now, everyone's getting crushed by inflation. Things are more expensive than they've ever been, really hard uh, to make ends meet. Well, public transportation provides a solution uh, to that. It's incredibly affordable. Uh, in 2020, the American Automobile Association calculated the average cost of a new car, a new car ownership, at $9,500 per vehicle, or about $804 a month. That's per individual, per car, per household. Whereas, uh, so a working family can basically save about $8,500 a year were they to not utilize a car and instead use public transportation. Uh, car commuting costs also cost time. So in Sacramento, Sacramentans waste 59 hours per year on average stuck in congested traffic. Uh, and those gridlock hours can average about $1,000 per year per driver in fuel costs and lost wages. So cars cost you money. Uh, and in contrast, right now, one ride on Sacramento Regional Transit is $2.50 for regular bus or light rail uh, service, $100 for a monthly unlimited pass, and if you happen to be a, a state worker with the state of California, that is a completely free uh, pass that is provided for uh, by the state of California that you can use as much or as little as you want. After this, uh, come up and talk to me. My day job is with SDI Local 1000, so I can tell you how to access uh, your, your monthly pass. Another really important piece is uh, safety and health. Um, so one of the things we hear about a lot when we talk about riding public transportation um, is safety. And we know that there's a perception about safety uh, regarding our bus and light rail service. Um, what's really important to note is that SACRT has really beefed up uh, the safety and security. So right now they have 85 dedicated employees for <coughs> safety and security that provide 24 7 uh, operations and monitor 1,500 closed circuit or, or live feed uh, cameras. And those are on uh, light rail trains, they're at light rail stations, they're on buses um, as well. Uh, in 2017, they installed a system that allows people working in a command security center to directly access or talk to uh, microphones at individual stations and on trains and on buses. They have an alert app application that you can download, uh, that I can show you how to download, that you can report suspicious activity, you can report issues on trains, and you will get immediate access to someone who is on the other end of the microphone and able um, to talk, you know, once we're able to file a report through that app. Uh, and that is called the Alert SACRT mobile app. And then, uh, you know, SACRT is really nationalized, uh, or I mean recognized nationally, uh, for their safety right now. They've won awards in, in uh, 2022 and 2020. Those were the gold standard awards uh, for system security. And their fare evasion, after they've beefed up um, this security uh, group, has dropped over 20% uh, in seven years. Uh, so really uh, a, a huge change uh, in safety. Now, another piece of safety really is you, as a pedestrian, walking around Sacramento or biking around Sacramento. Um, so this is really uh, terrible stuff, and you've probably seen incidents that have gone on uh, very recently, but Sacramento is ranked 10th in the nation for bicycle collisions, 6th for collisions for those under 15, and 7th highest in overall traffic fatalities and injuries. I mean, it is a, it's a travesty, it's a public safety issue, and it's something that investing in and providing for robust public transportation can help. It can get cars off the road that cause uh, those vehicle issues. It can provide you with safety being inside uh, a, a rail car or inside a bus. Uh, and it can reduce the overall number of vehicles uh, that are out on the road. So really important that transit actually helps make streets safer for everyone. We know street safety is a huge issue in Sacramento. Uh, another benefit to, to public transportation investment really is that uh, disconnected communities miss out on economic activity. So public transportation provides connection between communities and robust uh, street traffic that actually helps and assists small businesses. Um, modest projects to improve sidewalks, bike lanes, and crosswalks like you're seeing on, on Broadway happening right now uh, facilitate access for customers and clients uh, of businesses and safe routes 
uh, safe pedestrian access like you see on Mars Street downtown and other streets that really have a commitment to uh, a pedestrian means that it's helpful for businesses. We all know how much better business traffic would be on Broadway if we slowed it down. And, and we were down to one lane each way and we got less people on the road. Uh, because we'd all feel safer walking around up there. When is the, because they're working on Broadway right now on the other side of the highway, do you know when that project's going to be done, that road diet? Uh, you mean the section from the freeway to MLK? No, on the other side of the freeway, so the, the, this, the, the, the front the street. Beginning the beginning section. I think it's supposed to be done by the end of the summer, really. I mean, they're already paving, and normally paving is sort of the last uh, step in the process. And after that, striping, and you're seeing striping already going all the way down. The other thing that's uh, interesting there, too, is you're actually seeing an add-on, uh, an additional access way to get on to, to Highway 99, which is going to sort of change what it looks like underneath uh, the freeway, which, which will be interesting as well. That'll allow individuals to come from X Street, make a right and, and hop on 99, maybe reducing traffic for us locally on, on Broadway. Um, our current infrastructure simply does not support the growth that we're seeing here in, in Sacramento. We're seeing our neighborhoods and our communities grow at alarming rates, even though communities like the Bay Area and others are, are missing out on population, we're seeing population leave, we're seeing Sacramento grow. Um, so it's incredibly important that we have a system that can support that future growth when we continue to build out um, our communities. Another one that's crazy that I read is about home values. So decades of residential data show that homes with access to public transportation uh, are more desirable. Uh, and they've actually increased in value from 4 to 24 percent on average if you're near a robust public transportation stop. It's counterintuitive for some. Some people think, oh, near transportation, maybe there's going to be a lot of activity and too many people walking around or loud. But what it's shown is that that actually makes it desirable because that shows that you have access uh, by foot to the rest of the region right outside your door. Uh, now, because we're an environmental organization, uh, to the health benefits, uh, something that uh, Adrian is, is well aware of. But uh, the transportation sector in the Sacramento region contributes to over 50% of our greenhouse gas emissions. Those greenhouse gas emissions are the things that make our air quality absolutely horrendous. Uh, you know, I grew up in South Sacramento, not far from the Executive Airport. The combination of Executive Airport exhaust, tires uh, from, from uh, Freeport Boulevard, I-5 being right next to me, I'm surprised uh, that I can still run a mile uh, to them today. And in 2016, 57% uh, of the city of Sacramento's community-wide emissions came from transportation. So uh, huge, and that's specifically single occupancy cars. Um, you know, 57, that was it from 2016. Uh, but yeah, we're talking over 50% still. Uh, vehicle emissions are absolutely terrible for breathing. Uh, right now, Sacramento's fifth in a list of worst major U.S. cities for ozone pollution and 15th in the nation for particle pollution. Um, so, you know, the goal here is to clean up our air, uh, to make it better for young, old, recreating outside. We have beautiful parks and public spaces. Uh, how terrible that we can't enjoy them uh, as much as we could if the air quality was a little better. So, uh, the key though here is that the goal that everyone's on the same page, whether it's uh, SACOG, the city, the county, everyone wants to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, and in fact, the, the city's plan and, and target uh, is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 30% uh, by 2030 and by 50% by 2045. So, so how do we do, or sorry, you know, overall reduction of 19%, but the city is trying to increase public transportation by 30% uh, by 2030 and 50% and by 2045. So how do we do that? We invest in public transportation, uh, we get people on public transportation and off the road, we make our air quality better, uh, at the same time. Another funny one, again, is just physical activity. Uh, we know that we're, when we talk about seniors specifically and young people, uh, public transportation means that you are doing that little bit of work to get out of your house, uh, to take that step to the bus stop, to walk to the light rail station. That amount of physical activity uh, is going to be incredible for your health in the long run. Uh, if you're a senior and you go to your doctor, it's exactly what they're going to say. Uh, Personal vehicle transit does not provide that for you. You're, you're leaving your driveway, you're hopping in your car, you might hit a drive through you're not getting out of your car. Where's the activity coming from? <laughs> um, uh, so, so finally, uh, at equity and access, just some facts for you, 67% uh, of all SACRT riders don't actually own a personal vehicle. 
Uh, communities of color make up over 60% of transit riders, and 15% of passengers for SACRT uh, speak a primary language other than English. Uh, SACRT's service area is over 53% minority and 28% uh, low income. So we want to make sure uh, in Sacramento that transportation or lack of transportation is not a hindrance to people accomplishing their basic uh, needs. Now, uh, I know you want to hear about some things that are very specific uh, to Oak Park. Uh, so right now, uh, one of the most important things that's going on is the light rail modernization project. Uh, that's going on on the gold line. That gold line is a line that goes all the way from Folsom uh, to Sac Valley Station. But it really is the closest light rail line here unless you go to um, over to Curtis Park and, and hop on the blue line. That modernization is providing brand new low floor vehicles to that line that should be operational uh, by the end of the summer. Those low floor vehicles are actually made here in Sacramento at the Siemens factory in, in South Sacramento. Um, so pretty incredible that the funding uh, for that came from here uh, and the jobs are here in, uh, in Sacramento producing that. There was just an event uh, on June 1st where you could go and check out the new low floor vehicles, walk around in them. Uh, but, and, and so that happened this last weekend on June 1st. There's another event uh, of a similar type. That's going to be on Wednesday, June 12th. Uh, it's actually at the 7th and Richards uh, station. Uh, and there you can go bring your family, uh, bring your friends. You can hop on the new low floor light rail vehicles. Uh, they're going to be absolutely incredible. Not only are they brand new and clean, uh, because of the low floor, we get to get rid of that uh, platform that you have to go up to if you need access, if you're in a walker or a wheelchair, uh, a platform wheel to come out, you can just roll right on. So what they've done with the modernization is raise the height of the platforms a little bit so that it's flush uh, with the train, really easy to access the new light uh, rail vehicles. Uh, Stockton Boulevard Bus Rapid Transit. So uh, this is a project uh, that is incredibly important for the region. Uh, so Bus 51 that runs up and down Stockton Boulevard uh, is the bus for Sacramento's fleet that has the largest ridership already. Consistently the best bus line. Uh, and it's because you have these incredible population centers in South Sacramento, uh, Little Saigon, all the great businesses on Stockton Boulevard, all the way up here to, to Oak Park, uh, and then now with UC Davis Med Center and going all the way up um, you know, to, to Midtown almost. And so the goal uh, is to turn Stockton Boulevard into a bus rapid transit line. So what does that mean? Basically, uh, bus service, but it's high frequency bus service. So we're talking about lessening the, uh, the amount of time you're waiting between buses, going from about you know, 30 minutes on average to 15 minutes or less. Uh, you'll have dedicated lanes, so it'll allow for more efficient travel uh, down Stockton Boulevard. Uh, those lanes will allow the bus to have platforms uh, for boarding that won't be the same uh, platforms that are outside on, on the streets right now, um, most likely uh, in the center. And the other thing is they provide efficiencies in travel and transit times because they have signal control. So those uh, buses are actually going to be connected to the grid and they'll be able to control signals to allow for efficient travel up and down. So you'll be able to walk out there at any time, uh, get on a bus that's going to be running in that dedicated lane, get to where you need to get efficiently without traffic congestion. Um, the goal is to bring them to, to Sacramento very soon. Uh, right now, Sacramento has already received a grant from the federal government to do the planning uh, for that. So be expecting to hear about some outreach uh, coming to your neck of the woods soon uh, when they're reaching out for feedback about the Stockton Boulevard BRT plan. And then uh, the bus stop improvement plan. Uh, the SACRT has been uh, done robust outreach to try to seek feedback. They've gotten that feedback and they're working on improving uh, bus stops all over. So that includes 51 on Stockton Boulevard uh, and the 68 on Broadway. Uh, you know, add in some shade structures, uh, add in a, a little more uh, convenience so that it makes it easy for you when you're, when you're riding the bus. So what's the point of, of the conversation here? The, the point is that our system in Sacramento is grossly underfunded. Uh, so, in LA, uh, County Metro, their system receives one and a half cents of every dollar spent um, uh, from sales tax. Uh, in the Bay Area, they receive one cent, a, a whole cent. Uh, and in uh, Portland, they receive three quarters of a cent. In Sacramento, it's one sixth of one cent. So, SACRT operates with an, an 
incredibly low operating budget from revenue coming in, and they're still able to provide the services that they provide today. So just imagine what they could do if they were funded sufficiently, like LA uh, and the Bay Area are. So two main asks uh, for you today. Uh, one is give transit a try. You know, if you haven't been on a bus in a while, or a light rail uh, vehicle, or you haven't used a paratransit service or a RT smart ride service, please do. Give it a try if you haven't done it in a while. It's absolutely incredible. Smart Ride, you can download uh, the app. It's actually door-to-door -door service, basically. Uh, it's possible that it might make you walk to a pickup point that's within you know, a block or two. Uh, that service is slightly more expensive, but barely. I mean, we're talking less than $5 for a ride, and it operates like an Uber. Uh, and it'll pick you up and, and drop you off to where you need to go. If, if you have five people or more being picked up at the same location, and being dropped off at the same location, it's free. Mm. So again, it's, uh, and, and now, again, that's within zones. It doesn't. It won't take you all the way across town necessarily. And you can you can find the zones on our website. But within zones, you can you can make a free ride if you're with five people or more. And, and finally, the second piece. Look out for opportunities uh, to fund public transportation here in Sacramento and in the region. If offered the opportunity, let's provide that funding to SACRT because if they can do what they're doing right now with one sixth of one cent, imagine what they can do with a fully funded system. Um, so with that, I have uh, some surveys for you. Really simple, you know, only like four or five questions. I'd love for you to fill out so SACRT can get an idea of some of the uh, priorities that you all have in the community with, that you want to see. Uh, the public transportation service. Uh, any any questions from anyone? You mentioned this new light rail train, and I was picturing something that is kind of aerodynamic. Is that bigger than the market? It's going to be. And where it would pick up more speed, the type of system it was aerodynamic. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. quite. It, it doesn't, the, the shape of the front of the train doesn't, it doesn't look like a bullet train, for instance, with like the really, yeah. uh, you know, or a cyber truck that everyone's seeing around these days. No, it doesn't, it doesn't quite have that. Uh, but what it does, it's a little taller. Uh, it's still going to be able to operate the same way. Basically, the tracks are what limit the speed that, that something can go. It's not necessarily the, the aerodynamic nature of it. So uh, in the city, they can only go at a certain speed. But uh, what it's going to provide, it's much taller. Uh, like I said, so when you walk in, it's just going to be a much more comfortable experience. You know, the, right now on light rail trains, each one has that step up, no matter where you, you board, unless you board on, on the front uh, with the platform. So right now, it's, it's just going to be you know simply walking onto the train. Um, seating is also a little more comfortable. Materials cleaner, that kind of thing as well. The, the other big thing about about the new trains is they're not the old trains. Um, <laughs> 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 Some of which we're still running the original trains when we started light rail service 37 years ago. Yeah. So they are very difficult to maintain. It's hard to get parts. It's hard to keep them clean. Um, the new trains are just going to be, they're so nice. And they're quieter. They're a little bit uh, less bumpy to ride. Um, and, and again, that low low floor platform, whether you're with a chair or with a stroller or a bicycle or a vehicle or whatever, it's just much easier for you. Yes, ma'am. So we mentioned 51. You know 51 starts at the port building, come down Broadway. That route going to change because if that changes, you're going to miss the majority of the people from the park, right? I don't think so. Down, no plans to change the route as of yet, um, and of course they would do some outreach yeah. and talk to everyone if they were planning on doing that. But no, no changes. Uh, right. Can you tell the time of the event on the 12th? Yes. It's uh, 10 to 12:30. Yep. 10 a.m. to 12:30. Thank you. Seventh and Richards. 7th Richards, it's called the Township 9 station, but yeah, 7th Richards. Yeah, North 7th North Richards. Yes, ma'am. I have a um, two part question. You said there are 85 security employees, and how many routes do they monitor? Uh, so, right now, they have about 82 bus routes, and then there are the three light rail routes. Um, and then Smart Ride Service, I mean, those are much smaller vehicles, so you have. Uh, you know, the, the driver itself is able to monitor more closely. Uh, but so it's the, the bus, the um, 82 different bus routes, um, and then the three uh, light rail lights. How many of those 85 are boots on the ground? So there's, there, it's twofold. One, you have employees who that's, you know, their job is to not only maintain security equipment, to actually uh, produce 
um, you know, whatever the security plan is uh, for individuals to respond to security incidents. You also have a program uh, that they have with transit ambassadors. So those are individuals who are on trains walking around. They're not the individuals who are collecting fare. They're not the individual driving the light rail uh, train or bus. They're actually individuals employed by SACRT who are walking around and they're just available to make sure everyone feels a little more comfortable and that there's a presence on those uh, trains. And they are currently staffing those positions. They have individuals in them, but they're adding to their, to their transit ambassadors as well. Of the 85 security employees, they're all not necessarily doing what I would think hands-on security, whether that's monitoring videos or boots on the ground. I don't believe so, but I can definitely follow up with you to get some more in-depth about uh, how they're utilizing their staff on a, on a daily basis. Okay. Any, uh, yes ma'am? The other person, I hear pitch before me, but then at the same time, you mentioned before that it's pretty getting in this country more than it is pretty competitive. The current rates are you're looking at ways to accommodate people, like seniors, I, I know you do that now, but yeah, so Sacrity's got, you know, again, a, a ride-free program, a free ride program right now um, to tackle uh, youth specifically. Um, they're bringing back, they're looking at bringing back discounted fares for, for seniors as well. Um, so they are trying to deal with those issues. But when we talk about pricing, we just talk about basically what are your options? Your options are to utilize a personal vehicle, which is incredibly expensive, a depreciating asset with maintenance and fuel and all these other things. Uh, or you can take uh, a light rail or a bus service that costs $2.50 per ride, or again, free if you're a, a state worker. So um, I, the fare, as far as fares are concerned regionally, is quite competitive. Uh, I don't know that there's any plan to bring down the fare, but what's really cool about SACRT is they don't actually uh, use as much fare revenue or rely as much on fare revenue as other services do. So they're not mining fare revenue to provide for uh, their service, they're actually getting the funding that they're getting mostly from uh, things like sales tax and otherwise, even though, again, they only have one-sixth of one cent in the county. The, the other fare related thing I want to make sure you're all aware of, um, we are still offering free fares for students uh, K through 12. Um, so they, they can get the pass through school, through libraries, I think some community centers have them. They're good for a year. We, we reissue them you know, every year in the fall when school starts up again. And that's for any, any student up to 12th grade um, can, can ride our system for free. And that includes the smart ride. So um, it, it's, it's really a great service. Now, you may have seen there's been some news coverage lately. The city of Sacramento has been subsidizing that with a million dollars. The city is having some budget issues. They're not going to be able to keep that same level of funding. The mayor has committed $250,000. We're looking for other sources of funding to, to kind of backfill that. We're very hopeful that we'll be able to keep running that free service for, for, uh, for students. We, we think we'll be able to do that. So um, just keep that in mind for your, your kids and grandkids. And it's not just to and from school. Right. Student wants to use on the weekends. Of course. Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to say that UC Davis Health also offers a transit sub subsidy. It's $100 a month, and it's designed to fully cover um, an RT pass. So if you're the student employee and you don't yet know how to access that benefit, you mentioned Saxony College too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah
for the other part, seven minutes, right? So now I'm gonna walk, okay, two minutes, whatever, it's right there, but it's gonna take me an hour to loop around and get back to my two miles. Well, then it just comes down, honestly, again, it's, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. There, it comes down to preference. It's like, you know, people prefer to eat meat only two days a week to, to limit consumption. You know, it's that kind of thing. So uh, it's one of those things that maybe you don't do it every day if it's not uh, convenient for you. Maybe you, you try it out when you're going to stay out after work and do something fun, or you want to people watch a little bit, and uh, you mix and match. It's not uh, going to be perfect for everybody, but the fact that 22 million people use it or used it prior, and the fact that the number of people that rely on it in Sacramento that don't have vehicles, um, it's just so important that we talk about investing in it because it's really a community benefit more than, more than anything. Let, let, let me also say, we would love to offer more frequent service and more robust service so you know, that it, it gets you closer, faster. Um, given the, the budget that we're looking at right now, we, we're, we're doing as much as we can with the resources we have. With a little more money, all things are possible. Yes,
So you, you talked about the one sixth of a cent thing. That makes me think, okay, there's probably going to be a, you know, like a, a measure that we'll vote on at some point about increasing the sales tax, right? The, how much we contribute. Um, and it, of course, it's a bad year now, but what year, just politically, like, do you think that would happen? Or would, would we expect to see a measure that would improve in you guys' budget? Um, I, I can take off my peer for SAC RT uh, hat because they can't get involved in any sort of you know, okay. camp campaign regarding. Uh, I am very confident, personally, from the organizations that I'm affiliated with, ECOS and, and SMART, uh, that we'll be looking as soon as 2026. Uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very confident um, that we will have shaped uh, an idea that is a community-driven idea, that is not from developers, that is not from large corporations telling us uh, how we should utilize and spend money uh, regarding transportation, but that is something that's actually coming from the community and is addressing communities' needs like affordable housing, uh, safe streets, and public transportation. So I, I believe that that uh, is on the horizon for 2026, but I might be hopeful. You know, it might just be me. Well, we can talk after, but yes, uh, in the la last time around in the, the election, uh, Measure A was actually a measure that was funded primarily by developers who were seeking funding, uh, and so they pushed it as a citizen's measure, but it wasn't actually the citizens that were doing it, uh, it was just a process, and it was the development community that really wanted that funding. And they were going to spend it on things that, was good, uh, that were good for the development community, not necessarily uh, for the region, like freeways and other stuff. But again, uh, I'm an evangelist on these issues. So, uh, but I uh, really, really, really appreciate uh, your time, everyone, and, and attention. Uh, I'll get these surveys to you. Uh, it'd be great if we could have you fill them out and return them. There's, there's, you. there's one more thing I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that SACRT is, is very heavily involved in, um, and that's we call it transit oriented development. And it's, uh, you know, when, when we originally designed our light rail system, the thought was people would drive their cars to a park and ride, park their car, get out, get on the, get on the train, and, and ride the train in. It hasn't worked out that way in most of those locations. So what we have now are some very underused um, parking lots, essentially, at some of our light rail stations. And what we're looking at is activating those, those facilities either with temporary things like um, uh, farmers markets and uh, the, the Asian community is going to use use one of our, our sites for uh, an Asian night market uh, later in the fall. Those those kinds of temporary you know short term uses, but also if you've driven past 65th and um, uh, Folsom uh, or 65th and, uh, and S Street over by the Smug Building, um, the new apartment complex over there, the Wexler, that was on one of our former parking lots. We sold them the property. They put now transit-oriented development there. It's mostly student housing, but it's right on our light rail lines. It's right at a station, and so that builds in more ridership. We did the same thing with, with a lot near um, on Arden Way, uh, where the old uh, lumberjack uh, hardware store used to be. Um, it's right adjacent to our Royal Oaks light rail station, and so uh, a beautiful uh, with with some low-income housing, some affordable housing there. That it, it's a beautiful um, development. It was full the minute it opened, and it's again right on one of our light rail stations. So it provides a great, easy way for those people to um, to access our system. We're looking at doing that in additional locations. Um, I, nothing immediate comes to mind. Uh, all well, actually, one, one dozen is our Howard Road station, um, which is uh, again just a little bit further east of Sac State, and. Another thing that we're doing there that's already done is uh, SACRT, SMUD, and, and a private company have installed some high-speed um, uh, electric vehicle charging hubs there. So you can go and plug in your part of your car. If you're people who are on the freeway, people who live nearby, whatever. And so that's the first kind of step of, that, of, uh, of getting that location activated in a, in a new way. So I think transit-oriented development is another way that we can build a ridership and Make some money to help support the system by selling off land that is currently not, not being used very well. That's super cool. Yeah, I, I think about there's this term mobility hub. Uh, I'm looking at Rosie, because uh, Rosie Kurt works for the Council of Governments. But you know, the idea that we can take things like transit stops and add things like electric bikes for charging, and they can really be, like meet all your mobility needs. You can bike there, you know, and get get on the bike. The, the, the final thing that I would add, um, 
just because, so, so I, my day job is with Sacramento Regional Transit. I'm also a member of the SMUD Board of Directors, and so I, I wear both those hats. And those two agencies have, have um, kind of partnered with SACOG and the Sacramento Air Quality Management District. We call it the Four Agency Partnership. And we're co collaborating on grant opportunities and other things to kind of help bring more money in, into the, the region to do some of these things that will help reduce our, our <laughs> improve our air quality, reduce um, uh, carbon emissions, um, and that includes things like charging hubs um, and activating some, some light rail spaces. So it, 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 it's um, things that we can't do on our own, that, that SACRT can't do on our own, SMUD can't do on its own, but, but by working together, we're, we're really trying to bring in more dollars, um, have a greater impact, and um, improve quality of life. Any other questions for, for Greg? I have one more then. What's the, you mentioned the free ride, if you have five people on the, the smart ride. The smart ride. What's the capacity of one of those smart rides? How many people can So they're typically one of our, we call them a cutaway bus, so they, they'll, they'll, they'll hold, you know, like 18 or 20 people. Wow. Okay. So. Have a backyard party. Take yeah. the party to the car. <laughs> 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 I, I, I meant to check the map and see where the zone is. I think we are in one of the zones here, but I don't want to promise you that. Yeah. And, and again, we, that system to kind of fill in some gaps where we know our fixed route system is, is not as robust as we'd like it to be. So, for instance, the Natomas area has, has a, a pretty good sized zone, and it's actually pretty well used because our, our regular fixed route service does not serve the Natomas particularly well. But people can, can use that service to get to and from the grocery store, medical appointments, kids can use it to get to and from school, although it's not particularly um, you know, it, it might be one morning you might call it up and they'll, they'll be there in 10 minutes, the next morning you, you, you dial up and well, it's going to take 45 minutes. So you can't, you can't always count on it to get to school or to, to get right where you need to be. You need, you need to plan it. Okay. I, I also, sorry, did someone have a call? I was going to say, there's not a here we're currently inside one of the zones. We are? Not. Oh, we're not. Okay. Well, we should look at South of the 14th Avenue. Okay. We should, we should change it. And the, and the other thing that Smart Ride does is it, is it is designed as much as we can to get you to and from the light rail hubs and, and, and some of the bus hubs too. So it, 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 it's kind of, it kind of fills in some of the gaps. Thank you so much for your time. Please fill out the um, Thank you. So, so there's surveys going out. Yeah, so, that's not there. All right, there's surveys. Take the surveys. We're not done yet. Um, there's a bunch of folks who have really cool events and programs that they're working on. So it's time for announcements. So uh, I know Tom, you talked to me about an announcement that you had that's something super fun coming up. I don't know. Are you, are you going to give the pitch or I'll give the pitch to you? Okay. Because we don't have a July meeting starting to teach you that July is as you know, the city in you know, the wisdom name is one of our alleys, not on alley, that's the Harry Potter series. So on um, July 31st is Harry's birthday. Yeah. So we're going to kick off the Diagonal Alley. We're going to have books to give away to the kids at the library there. We're going to have winning races, uh, costume contests. It's going to be hot July 31st, so it's going to be Seven in the evening, and it's going to be on Diagon Alley between U O P and Noel and all of us. It's going to be a fun day. Yeah. It'll be more posted on the O P N A website once we get all the data. Okay. And there's flyers. There's a pile right here. Okay. And you party at Diagon Alley. If you haven't been down the alley, please go look. There's all kinds of new features that have gone in. There's a Oh, this is one. All right, who else has an announcement? Over here. And speak loudly. Uh, so, again, my name is Angela. I work at Cash Community and Sexual Harm. We're located behind the Bonfair Market. I just want everyone to know that as of May 1st, We've opened a medical clinic in our in our space, so it's uh, 
It removes the barrier of uh, access to medical um, care for women. At this point, it's just women, but we will expand as, as we grow. Um, medical, uh, medical center hours are Tuesdays and Fridays for now. Um, I think we added Thursday too. I don't have the calendar with me. I should have brought it. I can share it with OPNA. But um, yeah, so there's a medical clinic for women. No questions asked, no insurance needed. You can come and be triaged there. Um, yes, so yeah. So Excuse me. Join you us say Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday? Friday. Friday, okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we're uh, doctors from Dignity Medical Safe Haven, are, are um, doctors. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so that's something. So we're very glad to bring to the community your specific time. Time? 12.30 to 4.30. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Who's next? You. Hey, my name is Caleb. I'm a pastor of the Oak Community. Uh, we're putting together a uh, back school block party on August 24th. It's going to be over at the Big Park in Plachy. Uh, we're in partnership with Highlands Charter as well, and the emphasis is uh, adult education and resources. And so. Uh, if you're if you're you've got resources that help families, uh, definitely come to the park. Uh, this year we're gonna have we'll have characters walking around. We have a big old kids area that's that's great with like bounce houses and stuff. And, uh, just it's a really great time. We're gonna get out groceries as well. We'll probably have little hot dog lunches, the whole thing. So that'll be on August uh, 24th. It'll be on the same time as the farmers market, which is pretty dope. Uh, in the morning, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, in partnership with uh, Highlands Charter and Hope Community and uh, Katie Maple's office and gosh, I, I feel like there's a million other people. So it's going to be a great, great time. Put it on your calendars. If you want to be involved or be a part of that, uh, come talk. Great. Um, Garnett Oak High School. Uh, we are having a prime dedication for the seventh year. Oh, my sure don't work with you in the second. Um, so I encourage you uh, all to come out and welcome your new neighbors uh, who are purchasing dedicating their home for Perry Hill Park. Um, I'll send the, the dates out and locations to the OPNA so they can send out to everyone. But uh, there's seven info lots in the park that will be acquired with the Sacramento Land Trust. Um, we've begun building on those homes and the dedication will be, I hope for three of those homes will be June 22nd. So yeah. So you, guys, and, so you guys were able to work something out with the Land Trust? Yeah, we ended up getting seven, seven lots from the Land Trust about a year ago. Um, Three homes were dedicated this past weekend, um, and then the remaining seven will be dedicated for this year. Some of that work, not all of it, but some of it is funded by the Aggie Square Community Benefits Partnership Agreement. So thank you for our awesome partner and Habitat for making that happen. Um, I am offering a walking tour this Saturday morning, so if you'd like to come see the project from just outside the fence line, I welcome you. Um, I'm also offering it again next week, Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. So come see me afterwards, and I'll help you get signed up. I'd love to see you there. Um, on Thursday, June 27th, at the Agnes Square Launch Space on Stockton Boulevard, with our HR department, we're hosting a workshop on writing a great cover letter. So even if, well, if your goal is to get hired at UC Davis job, it's our HR department who's putting on the workshop. So it's a great place to sort of unlock um, some of those tips and tricks that will help get your cover letter to stand out. But even if you're not applying to UC Davis jobs, if you just want help with your cover letter, we're also welcome you to come to the session. So again, I have a sign-up link um, that I can help you get connected with after the meeting. And then, Michael, are you going to talk about the STEM camp? Sure, yeah. sure. So, um, it, uh, to piggyback off of um, what Samiko was saying, uh, the, the uh, District 5 uh, um, Vice Mayor's Office, UC Davis, Wexford, uh, City Church, and Salvation Army, we came together and we put together a summer camp for kids. It's called Above the STEM, which is a play on Above the Rim. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the basketball court, make it into a geometrical shape, and teach some STEM concepts as well as basketball. Uh, in the morning time, they'll be doing some science-related learning. And on Friday, they get to go to the Science Museum. So this is the, kind of the first of its kind in this area. We have spots. So if you know youth who want to sign up, please uh, see me afterwards. I'll make sure I get you directly to sign up. It's going to be really nice. It's from June 24th 
to June 28th, and it's it's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So we got you. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Do you bring them? Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's going to be really, really nice. Uh, I also, too, just real quick, I'll make mine out of the way. Uh, the district office would like to, to also tell you all to please, please, please take a look at our, uh, our website, uh, which you can find on the city site. We have a community cabinet that the vice mayor started, right, because we like to get the input of the community just for things like this, right, so we can be better informed in our decision-making process. So please uh, look at that community cabinet from District 5, as well as uh, take a look at our, our, our website, okay? Um, and if you know any youth, we have spaces open, free food, so we're feeding them. All you do is drop them off in the morning, we got you, okay, till 5 p.m. that week, okay? So please, um, please sign up for Above the Step. Thank you. Um, I have an announcement that I, I'm looking at our Celebrate Oak Park team. Can we give them a preview of what we talked about with Celebrate Oak Park? Just give them a preview. Um, that'll be the last thing so that they, they, they have to stay. Um, so this is an event actually I'm helping put on. This is a food, the Sacramento Food Policy Council is a group that does food equity work around Sacramento County. There's an event here on June 26th, so in 20 days. Um, it's going to be a partnership with Sac County to basically start to build a food equity action plan for Sacramento County. Um, so there's been a bunch of research that the Sacramento Food Policy Council has been doing but for several years now. Um, and the county is now trying to incorporate it into a funding plan. It's funding. There's always like funding for everything the last few years and now it's like drying for everybody. But they still have some old funding that they're putting toward this. So, so the cool thing about this is you know, strategies for you know, improving farmers markets, increasing cow fresh utilization, um, and other things, and, and, and helping uh, local farmers and urban farmers are all going to be hopefully part of this plan, and it can be funded through through some SAC county money that they have. So come on the 26th, it's going to be in this room, um, and we'll feed, it's going to be really good food. I'm not going to say it's going to be better than this, but it'll be good, good <laughs> on the on the um, Probably some more, more options for people too. Um, so, so in any case, um, there's QR codes, and if you can't make it, we have a virtual option on the 20th. So there's a bunch of these flyers over there, hopefully you can see some of yeah, But if you're interested in food stuff, so. Uh, any other announcements folks have? Any, anything folks want to share before we go and celebrate Oak Park stuff and then call it? Uh, real quick. Hey, listen, uh, Oak Park Farmer's Market. Make sure that we're going by Oak Park Farmer's Market every Saturday, right? Okay, Jereen, you're out there doing a really good job. So we make sure we want to support. So spread the word that we're open and please visit. That's it. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, there's really good vet food vendors there. I yeah. just go there for breakfast sometimes. Yeah. Uh, it's great. Um, and then tomorrow is also First Friday. So right. I don't know how many of you guys enjoy First Friday in our little downtown strip. Um, there's going to be a guitarist outside Licks. There's going to be some um, Pride Month themed vendors outside Scrapping. There's going to be a drag show at Oak Park Brewing from 8 to 10. Um, it's going to be super fun. So there's a bunch of stuff happening. And then it's a bunch of vendors. Um, so just fun stuff happening tomorrow night in Oak Park. And the businesses have been struggling a little bit um, the last few months. It's just been a really slow spring for them. Uh, and so they were really need us to come out. And just come out so. um, I still have a flyer for this thing. If you want to get the $35 and be in the focus group, the HUD, it says emergency, it says a bunch of programs that I don't have. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a super important. So um, Rosie or Petra, there's Petra. Um, do you guys just want to give a little preview of Celebrate Oak Park, maybe start by telling us when it is and then some of the ideas we have for it? Celebrate Oak Park is happening August 17th on a Saturday, 10 to 2. So I just want, uh, Petra and I are co-leading this event. Uh, we have hired Summer Hayes that will be helping us do this, wow. uh, which is really exciting. <laughs> That's really very helpful. Um, so yeah, August 17th, um, we had our first kickoff with our partners this last, when, yesterday? Yesterday. yesterday. Um, and so we had several different folks that have participated in the past joining us for a conversation. We kicked it off with really just talking about what went well last time, what we want to replicate, what we want to improve. Um, so we're still in the early stages of it, but if folks are interested in volunteering with us um, for either brainstorming on things to do like 
before the event happens or the actual day of, please talk to me or Petra. We'll get you signed up and we'll have more meetings throughout the summer. Um, and then really big announcement is that we uh, were able to secure our premier sponsor through UC Davis Health, which is really amazing. So thank you so much for that. We got $10,000. Great thing for that. And then the, uh, Sacramento, the city of Sacramento, the city of Festival's grant program also gave us $2,000. So for $12,000, Rosie and Plot submitted both of those at grant applications. So give it for Rosie. We have some budget, we have health, we have a lot of ideas. It's going to be a great event. So, yeah, if you're interested, please join us. We do need people power and lots of brains to do this. So, it's going to be a great event. So, join us. Yeah, and some of the ideas are, you know, like we've had the last two years, having electric vehicle ride and drives with our friends at SPUD. Um, so, you know, you can pull up to Fifth Avenue and drop jump in an electric vehicle without the sales pitch, because, you know, it's like, that's what we're going to do. I just want to go test the full car right, yeah. and not get sold the car. Yeah. So, get to ride around all these yeah. things. I have six different EVs. If I have a Cybertruck, I have my, my yeah. car. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, that will all be on Fifth Avenue, and then you'll, I think what we've brainstormed so far is like, you get food voucher for the Oak Park Farmer's Market vendor. Yeah. This is all tentative. Yeah, all tentative. We yeah. want to do some kind of free food. There's going to be activities for the kids. Yeah. And last year we did lots of blow-up stuff where they can hang out and yeah. bounce around yeah. and follow the machines. Yeah. Um, that kind of stuff. Of course, we're going to have music vendors. We're looking to change the site location a little bit from last year. If you went, it was sort of on the, I don't know how to describe it, on the back side of the market. And so we want to make sure we take it to where the, um, the stages so that we can use that stage for more stage presence, more announcements, more just the ability to connect with folks to make it a little more cozy. Um, so yeah, we're going to change a couple things, but um, you know, we all feel better. Um, I think those are the main things I tried to do on this. The 17 yeah. 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 Come, come find one of one of one of them uh, if you want to volunteer to be on this planning group that's yeah. going to be meeting uh, every few weeks or something. Yeah, we're going to be meeting all of this. Yeah, we do yeah. Oh, thanks. Are we looking for you the canvas? For what? The canvas. Uh, I think we probably are, yeah. This summer, sometime soon. Ages. 16 and up? So, and then last thing, speaking of money, if you feel so inclined, we're just going to put this here. We won't look, we won't judge, but thank you guys for coming.